Hey folks, Sebastian Fla here, hope you're well. Out on another of my first ride videos. Today I'm on another Yamaha. This is the 2018 Yamaha SCR 950. An interesting bike, it's sort of a uh, scrambler come cruiser. So if you're interested in one of these machines, stick around and stay tuned, I'll tell you what I think. So why do I call the uh, SCR 950 a scrambler come cruiser? Well, it's because of its DNA really. This is a bike that uh, started off, you could argue, as the XV 950, the big air-cooled twin cruiser bike that Yamaha introduced. Basically they've taken that bike, they've chopped the uh, rear subframe off, uh, added some extra panels, raised its ride height slightly, and sort of scramblerized it. So you ended up with the, with this machine that is styled like a scrambler and hence the SCR moniker. Uh, but it has, as I say, the underpinnings of that uh, previous bike, the XV, which really was a cruiser. So it's a bit of an unusual marriage, really. I guess it's almost a, a class of its own because it's not, let's face it, it's not really a proper scrambler. If you're going to compare it with things like uh, other retro scramblers you can currently get, the Ducati Scrambler, the Triumph uh, Scrambler, of course, and even the BMW R9 T Scrambler, those all have some degree of off-road capability, particularly the Ducati, whereas this one doesn't really. It's a, a heavy machine, over 250 kilograms. Uh, it hasn't got a lot of suspension travel or a lot of ground clearance, so really it's a styling exercise. So whilst the bike may lack in actual off-road credentials, what it does have in spades is a load of character, and that's mainly because of this thumping great 950cc air-cooled V-twin engine on here. It constantly reminds you that it's got that because of its uh, characteristic thump-thump sound as you ride it, and the amount of vibrations that you get through the bike. Now character sometimes is a word that's used to disguise bad traits, and it depends what your feeling is on engines like this. For me personally, I find it a little bit too vibey for my liking. I do like the sound of it, but there is a bit of vibration through the mirrors, particularly when you're at idle, uh, in low gears, waking at traffic lights, things like that. You can't see out the mirrors in that case. And there are quite a lot of vibes through the pegs and the hand grips. However, for the sort of bike it is, let's face it, you're not going to be using this bike for track days or probably not for long tours either. If you're just out on a Sunday afternoon ride, it might be just the ticket. But once again, I find myself in the scourge of southeast, as in traffic. There are no good biking roads around here, and there's always traffic on roads. It's a right nuisance. Anyway, let's not whinge too much. So while I'm waiting to find some uh, more interesting roads, maybe, <laughs> some hope, let me talk you through the uh, practical aspects of the bike. The first thing that struck me as I jumped on this machine, having ridden quite a lot of scrambler type bikes now, is just its width. The pegs on here are really wide apart, I guess because of the architecture of the engine and the gearbox. I feel like my legs are splayed out in front of me in a V. I mean, they're not particularly, but it does feel very, very wide, uh, wide compared to bikes I'm used to riding. What I do like very much is the power delivery. It's not a particularly powerful bike, something like 54 and a half brake horsepower, I think. But what it has got, of course, is loads of down, low down torque. So when you roll on, the thing just goes. At real world speeds, it's perfect. So again, if you're after that sort of cruisy experience, you're going to get it with this. Sounds just great. Handling is, uh, let's say, a little bit unusual. <laughs> just on the cornering, you have to muscle it around quite a bit. You've got these big old wide handlebars, which helps with that. But I guess, I guess the uh, trail is such on the bike that uh, you do have to properly manhandle it around corners. It's not a bike that you describe as agile. Suspension on it seems to be just in that Goldilocks zone. It's not too hard, not too soft. Quite nice for soaking up the bumps. I'm not feeling, you know, my bones jarred on every bump or anything like that. At the same time, it's not as sort of soft and wallowy as I thought it might be. So yeah, the suspension seems just right in terms of its out of the box setting. Mirrors on this, at these sort of speeds, what I'm doing 47 now. I can actually see behind me fine. They're not vibrating too much in this gear at this speed. They do look a bit Mickey Mouse though. I think if I had the bike, I would, uh, would definitely change those out for something a little bit more stylish, but they seem to work okay. It's a very straightforward bike in terms of uh, 
instrumentation and electronics in that it doesn't really have much. It's got ABS of course because it's Euro 4 compliant. There are no fancy electronics, there are no riding modes or anything like that. And the switch gear, I actually quite like, it's very minimalist on here. There aren't a lot of uh, switches and buttons because there's not a lot of electronic features on the bike as I say. But, these being small and neat does keep them very out of the way and in keeping with the sort of styling of the bike if you like. The sort of switch gear you might see on a, on a custom job. Which I like very much. The instrumentation as you can see is also very simple, it's just this dial with a LCD number in the middle of it. You can, there is a trip computer you can swap between, unfortunately there's no fuel gauge, which is something I think this day and age is inexcusable on a modern motorcycle. It does of course have a fuel light that comes on, but uh, that would then just give me fuel range anxiety. <laughs> Riding position actually is lovely on this, you're of course sat upright, my knees are at, uh, I'd say about 90 degrees, maybe slightly acute. Oh, check out those beauties. Spitfire and Hurricane outside the RAF HQ here in High Wycombe. Replicas, unfortunately, but they still look good. Anyway, I digress. So yeah, seat position, lovely and comfortable, as I say, wide bars, sitting upright. Seat feels quite nice and comfy. And it's uh, you know, a bench seat that you can move around on, so I think if you're a taller person, uh, you'd find you know this would be no problem on the comfort front. It's physically quite a big bike, as I say. So great for the taller rider. Well, I've got nothing behind me. I'm just going to uh, test the brakes out front. Not much there, to be honest. And let me just do the same with the rear. Yeah, the rear's okay. If anything, I'd say the rear is uh, a little bit stronger than the front. It's actually got only a single disc on the front wheel. And it is quite a heavy bike, as I mentioned, so uh, you have to give that lever a fair shove. Let's just try it again as I come into the 30 zone. Yeah, I mean, it's adequate for the sort of bike that it is. But they're certainly got, not going to have your eyes popping out on stalks or anything like that. That's got a very nice lazy ride feel about it, I must say. I don't want to be coming across as too negative about this bike, because uh, so far it seems I've just been pulling out bad points. But what is nice is this the character of the riding on it. It's just beautiful for just going, like, like I say, around the lanes on a sunny Sunday afternoon. It would be perfect for that. It's not intimidating in any way. It's not actually difficult to ride. It's got that lovely thrum to the engine, like it. The tyres on it are those sort of uh, hybrid type tyres. They look sort of off-roady. I'll show you them when we do the walk around. But they're probably you know, 90% on-road, 10% off-road, which is probably the way it should be with this particular bike. As I mentioned before, I don't think you're going to really take this to do any serious off-roading on. I'm sure it could handle the odd green lane. Actually, this low-down torque is lovely and the gentle thrum of the engine. The more I'm riding it, the more I'm getting to like it, actually. When I first jumped on, I thought, hmm, not sure I'm going to like this, but actually, it's a nice thing to ride. these back roads with these sweeping corners. Very satisfying. Gearbox a little bit clunky but uh, positive gear engagement. You know I'm not getting any false neutrals or finding it hard to change gear or anything like that so gearbox is perfectly adequate. All right what I need to do is find a uh, suitable spot somewhere and uh, park the bike up, show you around it and talk you through the spec. So looks like a potential spot for a walk around and a bit of off-road too, how about that? <laughs> right, let's uh, stick her here then, select neutral, stands quite uh, easy to find, it's one of these um, fairly wide ones so it goes over at quite an angle but there's no doubt that the thing is, uh, is down properly and then the key, the ignition is on the side barrel here, there we go. So here we have it, this is the uh, 2018 Yamaha SCR950. Uh, as I say, sort of a hybrid cruiser come scrambler. For me it doesn't quite pull off the scrambler thing, because it hasn't got high level exhaust, but uh, you can kind of see what Yamaha are getting at. I think it's quite a handsome bike, but it uh, doesn't quite do it for me for some, for some reason on the looks front. Anyway, let me get the, uh, the other camera out and I'll talk you through the spec in the usual way. 
Okay, here we go then. So uh, let's start with the thing that this bike really is all about as far as I'm concerned, and that's the engine, this uh, thumping great uh, air-cooled V-twin. As I mentioned, this is the uh, 942cc 60-degree uh, V-twin unit out of the uh, XV950. Sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, Power-wise, 54 brake horsepower, so quite uh, low-powered, you could say, for a 950cc engine, but 79.5 newton metres of torque at 3,000 RPM, so plenty of shove uh, from a relatively low level, and that's uh, obviously where you need it for real-world riding, I would argue, so actually, I love that engine. That is the best thing about it. Uh, Brakes-wise, as I mentioned, uh, it's got a single disc on the front and back. They're both the same size. This pedal disc on the back here, you can see the ABS ring as well. These are 298 millimetres on both the rear and uh, and on the front. I'll show you the front one just for completeness, so you can see. But there we go. They're not they're nothing special, the brakes, but uh, but they do work. And there you can see that uh, tyre that I mentioned, which is um, uh, a Bridgestone tyre. It's called a trail wing. Uh, I think they're quite highly regarded, actually. It's more of an on-road um, than an off-road one but they do look good on this style of bike so we uh, quite like those. Uh, suspension very basic uh, telescopic forks at the front as you can see with these gaiters on there uh, not a great deal of travel it has to be said on them uh, and on the rear you've got these twin shocks that uh, look look the business uh, but again nothing particularly sophisticated about them you can adjust them for a preload but that's about it. And what I do like is some of the styling touches, like these lights here. These are a bit similar to on the, uh, oh, what's that other retro Yamaha that I like? can't remember what it's called now, but I like what they've done with the LED lighting here on the rear. That looks good. And also like the, uh, the uh, mudguard as well. Looks cool. And uh, similarly at the front, the lights here, I think, look really good and in keeping with the style of the bike. Alright, back to the spec then. Uh, seat height, 830 millimetres. So it's uh, kind of higher than a cruiser would be. As you can see, it's quite a narrow seat. So what they've tried to do is uh, raise the bike up via the suspension to give it a bit more ground clearance than the cruiser, the XV, uh, and then made the seat a little bit thinner. But I'm only five foot eight, I can get my feet on the deck uh, easily. It's not intimidating in that uh, in that sense. What well, is it's a good 252 kilograms wet, so it's a heavy old beast. So uh, again, which uh, is something you don't want if you're really going off road. So it's quite a heavy, heavy machine. Uh, tank capacity, 13 litres in this tank. Uh, so reasonable capacity and price on the road, 8,999. So it's uh, certainly not a cheap or budget bike by any means but at the same time it's not super expensive either if you compare it to things like the BMW R9 T for example. Uh, what else to mention about it? Oh one thing to mention it is, if we come around this side you can see it's uh, got a belt drive again not ideal uh, if you're going off-road you can imagine getting mud all caught in the uh, in the teeth of that and suddenly you've got a belt slipping so not a great touch for a scrambler it has to be said uh, but good for um, good for low maintenance that's for sure lots of accessories available from the Yamaha website you can get an Acura slip-on can skid plates bits of billet bling to put on it even some uh, Olin's rear shocks if you've got a spare grand to uh, to add so there we go that's uh, that's about it uh, what else to show you I think that's it. Let's just quickly show you that switch gear that I said I liked because it's very minimalist. As you can see, nothing complicated about the switch gear, but it's nice and positive in use and uh, nice and small as well, so it looks good on those big old handlebars. Alrighty, I think that's all I've got to say on the spec. Let's jump back on then and uh, ride us some more. Oh, okay, so a bit of a heft off that size stand, as I say. And uh, you can see, hopefully, my feet look flat down on either side. So uh, no problems in terms of seat height. Okay, the key, I quite like the fact that it's on the side, it's got authentic, but you can't actually see it. When you say here, the tank's quite wide. And I, so you have to sort of do that by feel. So that's a bit odd. Anyway, on we go. I do love the sound of that engine, fantastic. Right then. and loads of instant shove, which is very, very nice. Now, I'm gonna take a bit of a punt here, because I've no idea where this road goes to. I don't think I've ever been up here in my life. But it looks like the sort of road that this bike loves, i.e. a country lane. One of the striking things about riding this, as I said before, is just the width that your feet are apart. And when I just jumped on the bike there and pulled away, for the second time, I found myself putting my right foot 
actually on, I think it was the swing arm pivot rather than the foot peg, so it would take some getting used to that width. Loads of low down grunt though, when you wind on at these slow speeds, it's lovely for this sort of riding. And if sort of uh, country lane sightseeing is your thing, then this may well be the bike for you. So let's just take the opportunity to thank the folks up at uh, Brian Gray's Power Biking, the uh, Yamaha dealer for High Wycombe, for lending me the bike for review once again. Well worth checking it up there, the place is like a TARDIS, it's absolutely full of stock at the moment. If you're interested in Yamahas then they've got pretty much every model as far as I can see in. And loads of demo machines if you want to go for a ride as well. Give Sam or Garth a call, tell them I sent you and I'm sure they'll sort you out. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, summarise my first impressions then of the Yamaha SCR 950. Uh, let's start with the bad points that I've noticed on this briefest of rides. This is, as I say, only a first impressions review. Number one, uh, the width of the bike means that you have to hunt for the foot pegs. I think that's going to, it's just a matter of getting used to it. Uh, but it's a bit odd when you first get on it. Uh, the second thing I'm not so keen on is actually the Starling, although it's called a scrambler, I don't think it looks that scramblerish, and it's certainly not a bike you could really go scrambling on. I don't like the fact that it hasn't got a fuel gauge again, I think there's no excuse this day and age, it wouldn't have cost Yamaha anything to do that, or pretty much. Uh, so yeah, it hasn't got a fuel gauge, which is annoying. Quite a lot of vibes, you could put down to character, but for me they're just a bit too intrusive. And that's probably it uh, on the negative points that I've picked up on this first ride. On the positive points, the engine is a peach. It's got ample power low down, loads of torque. And for this sort of real world riding, you really don't need more power. It sounds fabulous, it would sound even better with the uh, optional Acra slip on can. And the engine's not going to catch you out. It's a lovely, lovely unit. Although I'm not a fan of the uh, overall styling of the bike they have got some nice little touches of style like the uh, the LED lighting for example I think looks great it's a very very comfortable ride the riding position nice and upright with these big old wide bars makes for a bike that you know you could ride for a, a few hours on the trot no problem at all if the vibes weren't a problem for you Gearbox seems nice and accurate, no false neutrals or any problems there. Brakes aren't that great, but they're adequate for the bike. Uh, what else to say about it? I think that's about it for my initial findings. Would I buy one personally when you've got other things like the Triumph Scrambler and the R9T up for grabs for not a lot more money? Well, to be honest, no I wouldn't. I far prefer those bikes. But if you're a fan of the Cruiser style, and you like a big air-cooled V-Twins, and this may well be worth checking out. Oops, just fell foul there of the indicator being close to the horn. <laughs> okay, so there we have it folks. That's my first impressions review of the uh, 2018 Yamaha. SCR 950. Hope that's been of some interest. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.